Hello and welcome to Polymi TV. This is Modern Infrastructure Wednesdays and I am your host, David Flanagan. Though you may know me from across the internet as Rockwood. In today's episode of Modern Infrastructure Wednesday, we're taking a look at stack references. But before we dive into that, let's cover a few of the basics. A Pulumi project is any folder which contains a Pulumi.yaml file. A project specifies which runtime to use and determines where to look for the program that should be executed during deployment. Supported runtimes are Node.js, Python, .NET, and Go. Every Pulumi project needs one or more stacks to actually be executed. A stack is an isolated, independently configurable instance of a Pulumi program. Stacks are commonly used to denote different environments that organizations use to build out their platform pipeline, such as dev, staging, and production. A stack can export values as stack outputs. These outputs are shown during an update. They can be easily retrieved with the Pulumi CLI and are displayed in a Pulumi service. They can be used for important values like resource IDs, computed IPs, DNS names, or even credentials. Stack references allow you to access the outputs of a stack from another stack. So what would be a real world use case for a stack reference? Platform engineering is a common practice in today's software landscape. Organizations invest in teams whose sole purpose is to increase the velocity of the application delivery teams by providing a platform that those teams can deploy their applications to. It's pretty common for those application teams to not have a great deal of knowledge about the platform itself, perhaps really only knowing that it's based on Kubernetes. In days gone by, we would have possibly sent the secrets to our application teams manually. We did this via email, IRC, and sometimes we even read them over the phone. More modern teams may opt to use something a bit more secure such as 1Password. However, that's still a relatively manual process. What if the application teams could simply consume the credentials with code? Let's take a look. If you want to try this out yourself, the code is available at github.com slash pulumi slash pulumi tv. From there, you'll find a directory called 2022 for this year, and then 01-12-dac-references. There's three directories in this repository, one for the platform engineering team to build out their platform, and two from the application team who want to deploy to that platform. And just for example purposes and a whole lot of fun, I've decided to implement that in TypeScript and F Sharp. I have this code checked out locally, and we have VS Code so that we can take a look. So we'll start with the platform team who have implemented their platform in Go using the Pulumi Go SDK. Now, this is not very convoluted and not something I would consider a production platform, but it is a good start. Here we're using Civil Cloud to create a new network and firewall. Once those are created, we then create a Kubernetes cluster. And at the very bottom, we export the kube config. Now, this is extremely primitive. It is a vanilla Kubernetes API with no backups, no monitoring, no observability, no logging, no nothing, but it will allow us to consume it with a stack reference for our application teams. So we said at the start that these outputs can be consumed in a multitude of ways. First, we can use the Pulumi stack output command to get all of the outputs in the terminal. You'll see that this is the secret value and has been hidden from us. However, we can override this behavior with show secrets. There we go. We can also use the Pulumi SAS backend. Here you'll see the Pulumi TV project and our platform stack. From here, we can see a list of all of our outputs as well as all of our configuration passed in. Because again, because this is a secret, it's sophisticated from us by default. But we can click on details to get the raw value. But this is still very manual. So let's Automate the consumption of the secret with our application code. So let's start with TypeScript. 
here we have a Polymer project and an index.ts. The first thing we need to do before we do anything as an application team is get access to the platform that we wish to deploy to. You can see here, this is really easy to do in Pulumi. With one line of code, we're able to create a property or an object called platform, which is a stack reference, referencing our raw code slash platform slash platform stack. This name is just my Pulumi username, followed by my project name, followed by the stack name, platform, platform. Then we can create a new Kubernetes provider. We just pass in the kube config saying that we require an output from our stack reference called kube config. This require is great. It means that if our platform team isn't exposing the credentials that we expect, then our program will fail relatively early. So we do have a contract between the platform team and the application delivery team. From there, we can then use our Kubernetes provider to deploy an arbitrary workload. Here, I'm deploying Nginx. So let's run this and see if it works. I'm going to deploy to a stack called application-ts. It's now consuming the stack reference from the platform team, checking to see if we have the kubeconfig value. And it looks pretty good. It's happy that we have a Kubernetes provider and a deployment to create. So let's click yes. Our provider was created, our deployment is created, and the job is done. Now we can confirm this did exactly what we expected. If we jump back to our, app, our platform application, we can run Pulumi stack output and write this to kubeconfig. Now we don't want all the outputs, we want a very specific output. So I'm going to add the name here. This will create a kubeconfig file in this directory, which will allow me to query the Kubernetes API. I can now export my kube config to be equal to the current working directory slash kube config. And now I can do kube config get nodes. Perfect. Now we should be able to run get pods and we should be able to see that our application team was successfully able to deploy their stack. And we can see this Nginx deployment was created 81 seconds ago exactly what we wanted. So let's see what this looks like in F sharp. We can open up our F sharp directory and we'll open program.fs. And this is very similar to the TypeScript example. The SDKs are extremely similar. The first thing we need to do is create our stack reference by saying let platform equals stack reference, passing in that same identifier of username, project, stack. From there, we create our Kubernetes provider, passing in and using require output to ensure that our Pulumi program will fail early if we don't have that contract agreement with the platform team. Next, we deploy our Kubernetes deployment. The indentation has gone a little awry here, so I'm not going to go through all of that. And then at the very end, we tell it to run the infra function. We can run Pulumi up here, and we will see it exactly the same as we've seen of our TypeScript application. First, Pulumi reaches out and checks the stack reference exists. So it's consuming our stack reference, telling us it needs to create the three different resources. We can approve this change. And just like magic, our new resources will be created. Voila. So let's just confirm once again that we get what we expected. We can run kube control get pods. We see our Nginx deployment from six minutes ago from the TypeScript SDK. We see a new deployment from 11 seconds ago from our F sharp SDK. So that's it. Stack references are a great tool to pass things from one team to another. Whether you're doing platform engineering or something else, you can use stack references to deliver credentials or other values in a safe way. They work across all of our SDKs, so all your teams can use different languages if you wish. Go have some fun. We'll speak to you next time. Have a good day.